Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I'm going to be playing another Quick Draft of Dominar United, which has just returned to the Quick Draft queues on Arena. Without further ado, let's get into our pack one, pick one. We've got a decent rare here in the Raven Man. It's a solid card, but it is pretty slow. Kind of an expensive activated ability there, but you can get a good amount of value from it, forcing your opponent to discard a card and getting a 1-1 bird token. That being said, I don't think it's a huge slam dunk mega powerful rare. It is along the power level of a decent uncommon, and we have an incredible uncommon in this pack, which is the Nishoba Brawler. This is one and a green for a star three. The power is equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control. That is showing off the domain mechanic in the set. Domain is one of the strongest things you can do in this set. They have printed a lot of support for the mechanic at common. There is a dual land in every single two color pair in this set at common that contains basic land types. So it is not that hard to pick these relatively highly to get a large amount of basic land types on board to help all of your domain cards get more powerful. Cards like Nishoba Brawler can have a really high power on your two mana creature if you have a good domain count. Cards like Yavamaya Sojourner can get cheaper based on how high your domain count is. There's just a lot of really powerful ways to build around that mechanic, and the Brawler is one of the better ones. A two mana three three tramples already an incredible deal, and that is relatively easy to get in a domain deck. Sometimes you can even juice it up all the way to a two mana five three, which is completely absurd. So I'm gonna pack one pick one this Nishoba Brawler. But for the top three cards here, we've got the Brawler, the Raven Man, and then a pretty big drop off after that. We have a bunch of solid commons for different archetypes: Phalanx for the creature heavy white decks. Soul Tender for the Graveyard Recursion Black decks, and Sojourner for the Domain Green decks, so Raven Man and Brawler are definitely the top two. I'm definitely going to scoop up Nishoba Brawler, though. Pack 1, Pick 2 has some pretty sweet stuff. The best direction for us to go is the next follow-up, very solid Green Uncommon to take after our first Green Uncommon. Mossbeard Ancient is a very good way to stabilize against more aggressive strategies if you make it to 7 mana. You're going to gain 5 life when it hits the board and spit out a 7-7 seven, seven trample. That is just a large stat line that can finish an opponent off really quickly, being able to trample over whatever they're blocking with. And uh, again, that 5 life gives you some breathing room to help stabilize, especially when it comes alongside that 7-7 seven, seven blocker that's really hard to attack into. So, big fan of the Mossbeard Ancient at the top end of any green deck's curve, so I think I'm going to scoop that up here. There's some other really strong cards in this pack, but they're not instant follow-ups to Nishoba Brawler, outside of mainly these uh, domain lands here. But for other really sweet cards, Electrostatic Infantry can be a great card to take early and try to head into the blue-red spells deck, where you cast a ton of instants and sorceries, make this absolutely massive really quickly. Urborg Repossession is a very good value play late game in any deck that has black and green. Most domain decks are playing at least a little bit of every color, so this does fit quite well into the more grindy, late-game-oriented domain decks, so Repossession's a pretty high pickup as well. And then there's like Flowstone Fusion for decent instant speed removal slash combat trick kind of stuff. I think these are the best cards that we're not taking out of this pack outside of the duels. Turret Kenyred has always played a bit slow. 5 mana 3-3 three, three is really, really small, even if it has flying and a very good ability. So Tura, still an okay card, but not quite as good as I think these other five. Pack 1, pick 3 is a really weak pack. There aren't any of these cards I'm really excited about for any archetype, even if I weren't heading in the green domain direction. If I were on like blue-white flyers, Soaring Drake is still really filler. If I were on red-white aggro, Warbrood is still filler. And uh, yeah, even for like green-white tokens, Queen All in All is not the greatest thing ever. Kind of small initially and doesn't give you a massive bonus for playing more tokens. Pretty weak pack all around. For what we're doing right now, the best cards are like Crystal Grotto, Deathbloom Gardener, and Meteorite for fixing, but these are all very mediocre fixing. The kind of fixing that you prefer not to end up having to play, but you have them like in your sideboard as a backup plan if you don't get enough 
good dual lands and stuff throughout the draft, you can use these cards as fixing. So I guess I take one of these. The strongest cards in the pack are probably like Warhorse. Nice getting multiple bodies off one card and like Strength of the Coalition. A good combat trick for a deck with a lot of creatures. You can put a plus one plus one counter on everything on the board and give your whole field, uh, well, give one of the creatures on your field uh, plus two plus two till end of turn. Yeah, maybe I just take Strength of the Coalition because it's the strongest card. Because, yeah, I, I really prefer not to have to end up playing these mediocre kinds of mana fixing in the domain decks. When you're already going to draft a lot of dual lands for the archetype, you're going to have a lot of mana fixing naturally, and dual lands are just so much better than Crystal Grotto because they hit those basic land types that are important for you, and they're also better fixing than creatures and artifacts that fix you because those also don't hit your basic land types that are important. So I'll just take a Strength of the Coalition, I guess. Not super excited about that pack. Pack 1, pick 4, we have Tail Swipe for a very nice, efficient removal spell. And then Yavamaya Sojourner for big domain dork and a couple domain lands. I think my pick order here is Tail Swipe number 1, that's what I'm going to roll with, for just an on-color removal spell out of green. Uh, but then I'd actually probably take these domain lands over the Sojourner, but that would be the third best card for us here. Strongest card in the pack in a vacuum is Balmor for that blue-red spells deck, so if we went for that early electrostatic infantry, hopping on the Balmor train would be a pretty solid place to go. But we're still pretty firmly just on green for now. Take a tail swipe here. We don't even have to end up being a domain deck. Neshoba Brawler is going to be fine if we're any um, two-color deck, especially if we're splashing a third. But a two-mana 2-2 two, two trample is not unplayable. If we're splashing a third color, or sorry, a two-mana 2-3 two, trample is not unplayable. And if we're splashing a third color, two-mana 3-3 three, three trample is great. So not even necessarily having to be domain here if we just keep taking great green cards. We could end up like green-white or green-red aggro. Well, speaking of taking great green cards, I'm a very big fan of Sunbathing Root Walla because it gives you something to do on turn two in the domain decks where they usually have a lot of really good late game plays, so you want to have the good early game plays all set up. Take these as highly as you can during the draft, and Sunbathing Root Walla is like the best one because it gives you a two mana two two to trade off with early or threaten to block and pump. That also just turns into a win condition late game because you spend that four mana, all of a sudden it's like a 5-5 five, five, or 6-6 six, six on attacks and blocks. So Sunbathing Root Wall is really, really good. Urborg Repossession is also fantastic, as is the Radiant Grove. These are the three cards we're really keeping an eye on here. But I'm going to take the nice early creature here. And again, worst case scenario, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two that can buff itself for like plus 2, plus 2 in a 2 color deck. Still good if you're not domain. It's just excellent if you are. Alright, pack 1 pick 6 has some incredibly high quality cards. We have Extinguish the Light for a phenomenal instant speed removal spell in black. Destroy any creature or planeswalker, and you might gain some life if you're killing a small mana value card. Micromancer here is a very good value play out of blue. We could play this and search up a tail swipe, put it into our hand. So 4 mana 3-3, three, three, not only draw a card, but draw a good card like a tail swipe or... Uh, some other one mana instant, like an opt, like scry one, draw one. I guess that's not in this format. It's been a while. I don't remember the blue one mana instance, but there's some decent ones uh, to go with the Micromancer. So that's a great card as well as a value play. And then another copy of Strength of the Coalition. Put a plus one, plus one counter on our whole board and get a nice combat trick on one of our creatures. There's also Florifer's Vine Wall, which is really good for domain strategies, digging for a land out of the top six. I think I'd like to... Um, commit to a second color now or try to push towards a second color now. I think Extinguish the Light is a really nice sign towards black. We also saw a couple Urborg repossessions throughout this draft that we might get to wheel, and if we do, we're going to be really happy to have black as a secondary color. So I'm going to take Extinguish the Light, try to pick up some of the Urborg repossessions, but you could absolutely go for the Micromancer. You could also hedge your bets here and stick to green, take a Vine Wall. But I'm going to go for the Extinguish the Light, see if we can get that pivot into black, get some of those Urborg repossessions back. And that's a pick 7, Tachiova, Steward of Tides, an incredible card for any slower, rampier deck, which is ideally just domain stuff, which we are potentially doing here. She does not do anything until you have a 7th land enter the battlefield under your control. So because of that, you don't really treat her like a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. 
like a three mana blue card. She's a seven mana card, so you don't need to have the blue source till turn seven. So she's really easy to splash in, especially with all the dual lands in the format, and incredibly powerful when she starts activating, making every land you play from turn seven onward a 3 3 flyer with haste as well. So Techiova is just incredible, easily the best card out of the pack. Scoop that up. Now we have a blue red dual land or a tear asunder, having to take the excellent remover. Here we have to take the excellent removal over the dual land again. This is uh, one in a green and one in a black to kick it. So four mana total, green, black. You could exile any non-land permanent at instant speed. So Terra Sunder is just incredible interaction. I'll take it over the tributary here. Pack one, pick nine. We have Yavamaya Sojourner competing with some dual lands. Doing pretty solid on endgame cards right now between... Root Wall that can buff itself, Techiova to finish things off, and Moss Beard Ancient to recover. So I think I can take a duel now over Sojourner. Make sure we get at least a couple duels out of the first pack here. I'll go for Geothermal Bog over Sacred Peaks, because it's basically impossible that we're going to need white mana for anything. I guess for uh, Strength of the Coalition Kicker, but we already have uh, Extinguish the Light and Terra Sunder in black that we would like the Swamp for, so we'll take Geothermal Bog here. Now a Contaminated Aquifer is very easily the pick. Shore up is a pretty good combat trick, but we're ideally just splashing a little bit of blue for the Tatiova. Pack 1, pick 11. I guess we scoop up a Meteorite just in case, but I'm going to start that off in the sideboard. Really would rather not end up having to play that. Take the little filler splatter goblin creature here over the filler combat trick removal spell of Battle Rage Blessing. Now I'll just rare draft an Uncommon. And I don't think we want to play Bark Weave Crusher. I'm going to start that off in the sideboard, see what we open up in pack two. All right, for pack two, pick one. It looks like we have access to a bunch of powerful black cards. We have Defiler of Flesh for a four mana, four, four menace, which is solid. Whenever we cast more black permanents, we can give something plus one, plus one menace till end of turn. That's unlikely to trigger very often in this deck, because again, we look like a very green centric domain deck. We are going to have black as a secondary color, but I don't foresee myself having that many black permanents. So this is basically just a 4 mana, 4-4 four, four menace, which is still quite strong. But there's also Braid's Frightful Return, which can be a very good value play. You could sacrifice a... You could sacrifice an expendable creature like a Splatter Goblin or a Fluorifers Vine Wall or something to have your opponent discard a card. You don't have to do that. You could just start on Chapter 2, Returning a creature from your grave to your hand, then making your opponent sacrifice a non-land non-token permanence or let you draw a card. It's a little two-for-one value spell. Kind of an interesting one there. And then there's just the incredibly And then there's just the incredibly efficient removal spell. Two mana for minus two, minus two to something to line of turn. And if you have the blue mana to kick it, then it's going to give an additional minus one minus one for each instant sorcery in your graveyard. So likely minus four, minus four, minus five, minus five later in the game. I like Tribute to Urborg a lot. I think I'm just going to scoop that up here. We're already splashing blue for Tachiova, and this is playable off of just the 2 mana minus 2 minus 2 instant speed. So I'll take Tribute here, again, mainly because I don't think we're going to have enough black permanence that Defiler is going to be anything more than a 4 mana 4 4 menace, which again is decent, but I think a 4 mana 4 4 menace with no other text is a little weaker than the Tribute to Urborg. And Braid's Frightful Return, I think, is the weakest of the three, because we're not likely to have a ton of great expendable creatures to get value from all three chapters on that card. All right, pack two, pick two is going to be a very easy board tuck bone rattle. This is one of the best cards for domain strategies. This is a six mana four four. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, choose a creature in your graveyard, return it to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control. Otherwise, put it into your hand. No matter what, it's a two for one value play. You're spending 6 mana for a 4-4 and returning a creature from grave to hand, but in domain decks, more often than not, you're putting that creature straight onto the battlefield. Even if we were just 2-color, if we were just a green-black deck, just playing this, getting a 4-4 and reanimating a Nishoba Brawler or a Sunbathing Rootwalla would be excellent, so Bortuck Bone Rattle is an absurd card. We're very happy to take it. Uh, the next best cards for us would be Tribute to Urborg and Tangled Islet. I think I'd take the Islet over the Tribute. Um, for being just a really good on-color dual land, but I would take the tribute over the ridgeline since we don't care too much about red mana outside of domain, 
but we'll easily take Bone Rattle over all of those. Got a phenomenal pack for us here. There's an Urborg repossession for Black Green reanimation. There's Contaminated Aquifer for hitting two very important colors to this deck. And there's a Sprouting Goblin if we end up with enough red sources to be able to play this early. Sprouting Goblin is really good for the domain decks that are red-green at the core, but we're looking like a green-black at the core domain deck, where Sprouting Goblin is going to be kind of a splash. A little difficult to play it early to actually mana fix for us, but this is really good for domain strategies because it can pick up any of your non-basic lands too, because it takes any land with a basic land type not specifically a basic land, so it counts these contaminated aquifer style duels. It can pick them up. So again, if if we were like green red and then splashing all the other colors, then goblin would be great. But I think we're green black splashing blue and some other colors. So I'd rather just scoop up an aquifer or an herborg repossession here. And I think I'm gonna go for another aquifer. Keep getting this uh, dual land count a little higher when there's not just like an incredible spell like Bortuck in the same pack. Not in love with this pack. Battlefly Storm is fine. Braids is Fry for a turn is fine. Deathbloom Gardener is fine. Uh, my favorite cards here are like Phyrexian Espionage and Essence Scatter. But blue is kind of a splash, so Scatter might be a bit rough. I think Phyrexian Espionage, though, we could wait till turn 5 to play this, so we don't need that blue source till later, and it's pretty nice value. Yeah, I think I'll roll with the uh, draw to your opponent discards a card kind of spell here. Take the Phyrexian Espionage. Pack two, pick five. Two pretty great green removal spells. Tail swipe and bite down, competing with a dual land primarily. Let's check our removal count right now to see if I can afford to take another um, half off color duel for more domain. Sitting at one, two, three, four removal spells. Not bad at all. Halfway through the draft. Means if we continue at this rate, we'd have eight removal spells. We only need like five or six or something, so I think we're doing pretty solid there. I'm going to take another dual land, grab the Geothermal Bog. For pack two, pick six, we can pretty easily take the Vine Wall here that lets us dig for one of our domain lands out of the top six of our library, helping mana fix us and provide some more domain. Love the Vine Wall quite a bit. Also like Choking Miasma that we could have against more aggressive strategies, but I'd rather have the more consistent card that'll work. No matter what our opponent's doing, that's more dependent on what we want to do. Knight of Dusk's Shadow is a really nice 2-mana creature out of black. 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two menace, and it can buff itself up. Counteracts any life gain from your opponent too, which is kind of cool. Pack 2, pick 8. We have two very good domain cards competing. The Sojourner could be pretty cheap with the right lands on board, and the Gaia's Might can... Potentially be one mana for plus five plus five, which is a completely absurd rate for a combat trick later in the game. This can just dome your opponent for lethal out of nowhere. Can win almost any combat. Pretty big fan of Gaia's Might. The card grew on me a lot. I'm not the biggest fan of combat tricks generally, but this just does so much raw power and toughness for only one mana that it's played pretty incredibly, and I'll take Gaia's Might over the Sojourner. Not much going on, pack 2, pick 9. We could take a Salvage Mana Worker for some mediocre mana fixing, just in case. It filters 1 mana every turn on our little 2 mana 1-3 body. We get another Gaia's Might here, pack 2, pick 10. Join the party. Now a Bog Badger is a fine filler creature. Splatter Goblin also a fine filler creature, but we've got less going on at 3 mana. Tetrio is basically a 7 mana creature. We've got a chunk of 2s and nothing else. Let's get our first 3 mana creature here. Worth noting, both of these white cards are very, very good, very high picks if you're in a white deck. So some good signs for uh, for white, but we are very committed at this point to our domain pile. Take a Deathbloom Gardener, very similar to the Mana Worker, some mediocre mana fixing if we need it. I think I'd rather take a Necromast than a Gardener. Get another decently beefy creature for later on in the curve. And then a Pilfer, I'll probably end up cutting. It's a fine discard spell. All right, and for pack three, pick one, we get an incredible card for a deck that's heavy on green cards. Defiler of Vigor. Five mana, six, six trample, already incredible. But every time you cast a green permanence, you put a plus one, plus one counter onto each creature you control, which is completely absurd. This is easily the pick 
nothing else comes close. If I had to mention the next best cards, it'd be Mossbeard Ancient and Flurfus Vinewall for this deck. Um, next best cards in general, Talarian Terror is really nice for the instant sorcery decks and Coral Colony. Really nice for the Defender decks, but we're just taking Defiler. Pack 3, pick 2, we have another one of the pretty good domain cards, Niel Abazoa Aeronaut. 4 mana for a 2 4 flyer. Whenever they deal combat damage to a player, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. Put one of them on top, the rest on bottom. If you have all five basic land types, you get to draw that card. So if you have full domain, you can hit your opponent with this and draw the best card out of your top five, which is completely absurd. So a really, really good payoff if you can get the full five land types for domain. Pack 3, pick 3. Pixie Illusionist is solid if blue is one of your main colors, because you can drop it down early and help it add to your domain card types. Still feel like we're just like green, black, splash every other color domain, rather than trying to be green, black, blue at the core, running Pixie Illusionists out turn 1. We could wait till turn 5 for this, but it is a lot slower that way. Uh, Barricade's fine, Bone Splinters is fine, Gaia's Might is the strongest card, but we already have two copies. Don't know how much mileage the third is going to get. I mean, I could see a general game plan of just running out mediocre two-mana creatures and then just constantly giving them plus four, plus four with Gaia's Mites to try to end the game. I don't know, I'll take another Might here. Not super excited about anything else in the pack. Here we've got a Strength of the Coalition, a Bite Down. We're already splashing blue. Talarian Terror could be decent. Joint Exploration could be fine. Like our big domain endgame stuff already. Don't think I need more endgame now. Let's just grab another removal spell. Actually, no, Myria's Outrider is a really good card. And we've already got double Geothermal Bog. It's going to be a tiny bit of a sketchy splash, but this card is absurd, and this is one of the cards that's really, really good with a Bortuck Bone Rattle, because you could drop this out as 5 mana 4-4 four, four reach, shoot your opponent for 5, and then whenever it trades off, play a Bortuck and get it back onto the board immediately, shoot your opponent for another 5, so if you get full domain, Outrider's just incredible. Really good blocker too, because it has reach as well. I'm actually going to take Miria's Outrider here. Wow, a second Tachiova versus a Terra Sunder versus a Haunted Mire? If these were in three different packs, we would be so happy. I think we just take Tachiova as another absolutely absurd win condition in the end game. But it is pretty sad to have to pass up on Haunted Mire and Terra Sunder. These are both really, really good for the deck, too. Pack three, pick six. Now we get an Urg spawn of Turg competing with Weather Seed Treaty. I was going to say all the domain cards dried up, but then they just clumped together into these packs where... If we could have had all three cards from that last pack and these two and just taken them over the course of several different packs, we'd be in such a good position. I think now that I'm splashing an Outrider, I'm going to want to run one Mountain with my double Geothermal Bog, and we're going to run a one. We're going to want to run at least one Island to go with the Tachiovas and the Niel. So the Weather Seed Treaty, being able to get green, black, blue, or red, is really, really valuable. And of course, it also gives us a trump blocker, and it also gives us a bunch of extra damage on turn three of it triggering. So I'm going to take Weather Seed Treaty. I think it's really valuable here. Urg Spawn of Turg is a really nice card, too. It's a little sad to pass that up. Surveilling, setting up our draws, being a massive blocker that becomes a finisher late game. But uh, I don't think I can deny the mana fixing that the Weather Seed Treaty is going to get of us. And pack three, pick seven, I guess we'll just be a double Tachiova, double Bortuck Bone Rattle deck. Good lord. And that's a pack three, pick eight, Terra Sunder versus Phyrexian Rager versus Urborg Repossession. Okay, the first half of pack three, outside of opening Defiler Vigor, got a little bit wonky. But the, the second half has been incredible. Good grief. Pick four to pick eight or whatever. These packs have been beautiful for us. Check out that curve. Check out the number of removal spells again. Don't have a lot of three drop creatures. Rager would be great here. But Terra Sunder is such a good removal spell. I don't know if I need Urborg repossessions in this deck when I have double Bortuck Bone Rattle. These are always really good late game value plays, but it looks like I have a lot of those with just the Bortuck game plan going on. 
Yeah, I mean, I have Extinguish, Terra Sunder, Tribute, Tail Swipe for removal. I'm going to grab another Terra Sunder. I'm going to grab another removal spell here. I guess I can use Gaia's Might to try to leverage those as removal. Again, everything clumping up. Two really good value cards. One really good removal spell. I'll take the removal, but I want it all. Pack three, pick nine. Take another Flurfer's Vine Wall. Pack three, pick ten. Vine Shaper Prodigy is a fine replacement to not getting that Phyrexian Rager. This is going to let us look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, and the rest on bottom. It's a four drop instead of a three drop, so it's a bit slower, but it is still a great value creature to slam into this deck. Gibbering Barricade could be okay. Uh, another Strength of the Coalition. None of those are going to make the cut. None of these will make the cut. We'll grab the Uncommon for Vault Progress. And that is going to end the draft. Let's build ourselves a really solid domain deck. All right, so we have 49 cards here. So we get to cut nine of them. Let's just start cutting stuff that doesn't work as well with our game plan or stuff that's just more mediocre. I think we have a lot of really good endgame stuff going on, so I don't need the more filler card of Writhing Necromass. Seems like our worst endgame card here. Like all of our fours, fives, and sixes now. Deathbloom Gardener I'm not in love with. We've got a lot of big stuff. It could ramp us up, but we don't really need the fixing, and it's very mediocre stats for its cost. So, and I gotta cut something, so I'm gonna put it on the chopping block. I'm not gonna instantly cut it, though. Badger's pretty filler, Barricade's pretty filler, but we want at least one of the two. I think Barricade's probably better. Just get a 2-4 slowing the game down. Give us a way to sacrifice our Vine Walls to draw a card could be good. Uh, definitely don't need the Salvage Mana Worker. 2 mana 1-3 is pretty bad. The rest of our two drops are all solid, except for like Splatter Goblin could be a bit filler as well. Looking at our non-creature spells, uh, Strength of the Coalition is the worst combat trick for this deck. Move our lands over. Uh, here, I'll do that. So we can have the pile of filler all together. Um, could keep that blue splash down. Keep low on the blue splash and just not play the espionage here. So we already have Vine Shaper Prodigy is a two for one. If Niel can connect, they can be a two for one. Actually, don't have a planes for full domain, so Niel wouldn't be able to draw us a card. I don't think I run one planes for the Weather Seed Treaty here because all of my other domain cards are really good on Domain 4 still. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I have that really needs a planes is Niel. Uh, all right, so Pilfer discard doesn't seem the strongest for this deck. I'm actually not super sure on the combat tricky Gaia's Might aspect of the deck. Doing that kind of thing. Kind of want to keep a lot of green permanents for Defiler Vigor. Maybe keep the Bog Badger at least. Cutting nine cards here. Yeah, Guy's Might is strong, but if I'm getting to these big plays, I'm going to kill them anyway. I don't need the big buff. And if I'm using combat tricks for removal, I could just use straight removal like Extinguish, Terra Sunders, Tribute. Tail Swipe. Yeah, that's five removal spells still. All right, we'll cut Strength of the Coalition and Pilfer first, 100%. Cut the Necromass, the Mana Worker, the Splatter Goblin. Still need to cut four more cards. Deathbloom Gardener doesn't help ramp into Tetiova. Because Tetiova needs seven lands on board. But it helps ramp into Bone Rattle, Ancient, Defiler, Vigor stuff. Could be good, could be solid. Super in love with the vine walls for that. Ramp kind of aspect and the Weather Seed Treaty as well. I think I'm just going to go full grind mode. Drop three Gaia's Mites. Might even drop both of these and put in a Plains and just run 18 land. Domain grind. Then it's possible to live the dream. Pull out a Plains with Weather Seed Treaty for Niall. That still feels really narrow. I'd be running a planes for one card in my deck. 
probably not worth it. I'm already cluttering up the board really well on turn two. Getting more lands with Vine Wall and Weather Seed Treaty. We could use Espionage as well to draw more land. I think I want to just hit every land drop rather than ramp up mana. I'm going to cut the Gardener and go for just the card advantage. Seeing more lands and playing more lands naturally. With Espionage for the draw two. That way we're trying to get to seven lands really consistently for double Tachioba as the main... Well, not... Kind of the main win condition, because they're really good and easily reanimatable with Bortuk. But then, like, Mossbeard Ancient can win a game, Defiler can win a game, we have other win cons. Yeah, I think that seems good to me. And we've got four blue sources for our four blue cards. Aeronaut and Tachiova, we don't need the blue mana for Tachiova till we have seven lands total. Don't need the blue for Nael till four mana. Don't need the blue for espionage till five, where we can kick it. So I think four is fine. Eight green sources, don't really want to drop below that. Six black sources. Two, three, four, five, six black cards, but one of them is double black. That seems right. I think the auto land suggester did a pretty good job here. Three red sources, because we want one that we can fetch off of the weather seed treaty. Yeah, I think that's exactly the mana base I want to run. Maybe drop a forest for an island, but that seems a bit greedy. Green sources do seem incredibly, incredibly important to this deck. I think I'm going to run with the mana base like that, and we'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the completed deck for today. This is going to be a green-centric domain deck, mainly green-black, splashing a little blue, a little red. In the early game, we're setting up our mana with cards like Fleur First Vine Wall, letting us dig six cards deep picking whatever land we need out of those, putting it into our hand. We've got decent early game blockers and traders with cards like Knight of Dusk's Shadow, Nishoba Brawler, and Sunbathing Root Walla. Good amount of interaction in the early game as well with Tribute to Urborg, Tail Swipe, Double Terra Sunder, Extinguish the Light. Some more mana ramp, more domain setup with Weather Seed Treaty. A little bit of card advantage with Phyrexian Espionage and Vine Shaper Prodigy. And after that is where we start pivoting into our late game plans of just gigantic Defiler Vigors, maybe Miria's Outrider to shoot our opponent, and then the main win conditions, two Tachiovas. If we hit our seventh land, we start making a 3-3 flyer out of every land that we play, and two Bortuk Bone Rattles to be able to reanimate those Tachiovas if they die, or basically anything else. We don't have a Plains in this deck, so we can't hit Domain 5, but we can definitely hit Domain 4 and get Tachiovas back very consistently. It's very easy for this deck to have at least Domain 3 to pick up a 3 mana value card. And uh, again, that can pick up pretty much everything except for Nyel, Defiler, Outrider. Like 3, 4, 4 or 5 cards that we can't pick up with Bone Rattles. But again, still some really premium 2 and 3 drop cards to pick up with these Bone Rattles for them to be incredible value when they hit the board. And then also the one of Moss Beard Ancient, another just big self-explanatory win condition, stabilizes up us with some life gain and then starts beating in as a 7-7 trample. So very solid, very standard domain stuff going on today. Without further ado, let's head into the gameplay, see how it does. All right, here we are on the play for game one. Only two mana in the opener, but Vinewall guarantees a third. Trying to get to five mana for Deviler. Try to win the game off that. Let's go for it. We know we can Vinewall into the Gibbering Barricade, almost guaranteed, and then we can use the Barricade to sack the Vinewall looking for another land. We have a Tachiova for late game now, too. We've got late game. Gotta hit our lands, though. Uh, I could take Geothermal Bog to up the domain and get a second Black Source for Extinguish the Light, but... Comes into play tapped, so I won't be able to play Barricade next turn. I think it's worth that risk. It's worth that downside, not really that risk. Vortok, uh-oh. Just drawing all the sixes and sevens. This could be an issue. Our opponent goes Natural Forced Plains Island into Weather Seed Treaty for the fourth land type, so a two-mana 4-3 trample off their Neshoba Brawler. Seems bad for us. Well, 
I hit a land there, we could have just extinguished that. Instead, we're going to have to just play the Gibbering Barricade. Now, Pixie Illusionist. Our opponent on all basic lands is having a much easier time with their domain. Draw a 3-drop that is blue. Tribute to Urborg doesn't kill anything. Got a sack of line wall here. Wow. Still missed drawing a land naturally this game. The only land we drew was off line wall. Guess I discard Techiova. That'll be really easy to reanimate with a Bortuck later. I don't think we have a later though. Natural basic land swamp coming in hot. Literal zero non-basic lands. Full five domain. Dead on turn, what, five here? They've got a sixth land on board, but they ramped one out. Yep, dead on turn five. Well, that was kind of the two opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to domain luck. Not much else to say about it. Just did not hit lands like our opponent good there. And we are going to be 0-1 to start it off. Alright, here we are for game two. Really nice looking mana here. We're starting with three lands and a fourth off of line wall. And we've actually top decked a land. So now we're guaranteed the five mana for Defiler of Vigor on turn five. And our opponent has not dropped a turn two. Um, what is it called? Nishoba Brawler to absolutely demolish us. Uh-oh, double Tachiova. That's a little awkward. Uh, so I played the Knight of Dusk's Shadow because I can just play a Vine Wall this turn. I don't think I'm going to run out a Tachiova without getting the, uh, the land trigger. But I guess I could, like... Because I have a backup Tachiova, I suppose I do just play a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three to attack with. Because I have a backup Tachiova, and I already have the mana for Defiler. I don't need Divine Wall yet. I'll still do it on turn 4 if they don't kill this Tachiova. They do probably still Vine Wall instead of playing the second Tachiova. Keep this Tachiova where it's uh, not at risk. I'm playing against another Domain deck. Expect to see it a ton in Quick Draft. Terra Sunder, Exile the Techiova. Dang. That's pretty uncool. Would have just liked it better if they put her in the graveyard so we could reanimate with a Bortuck later. What do I do here? Techiova Tapland? Next turn to Filer. Probably fine, because again, if they can't exile the Tachiova, then we still have two Bortok to reanimate Tachiova later. And if they do use removal on Tachiova, that's one less removal spell for Defiler of Vigor. And if they don't kill Defiler of Vigor, they're going to die in like two or three swings. Zar O'Janan, Scion of Ephrava. So whenever it becomes tapped, put a plus one plus one counter on all their creatures. Okay. Uh, we'll just play Defiler of Vigor. Get in with Menace first. Pass the turn. Vine Shaper Prodigy kicked so they can draw a card out of the top three. Put the rest of those cards on the bottom of their library. They go land for turn. They have two mana up here. Do they have a two mana removal spell for Defiler? Not a lot of those. No, they have a Raven Man. Weather Seed Treaty is another green permanence to go with Defiler of Vigor. So we play Vine Wall first, then Weather Seed Treaty. And that's going to put a two plus and plus one counters on pretty much everything. 
green, blue, and black sources. Already got double blue here. Just grab another black source, I guess. I'm going to weather seed treaty for a mountain. Counter on the whole board. And then I can play this swamp and Tachiova will trigger. Since it will be my seventh land. And then we'll have a flyer to attack with. Four, five, six, seven, eight. If they block Defiler with everything, they kill it. Double block Knight with Zaro, Janon, and somebody else. Um, I think I just sent in Defiler in the swamp. We clear out their whole board if they want to kill Defiler, or we just put them down to three life here. And they are going to choose to go down to three life. Now we have two absolutely must-be-killed threats on the board. Defiler, Vigor, and Techiova, Steward of Tides. There's a Phyrexian Rager. They go down to two to draw a card. Attack with Zaro Janin. Second so block with the Defender. I guess I could have kept it for the Barricade. Oh wow, a Vine Shaper Prodigy here? Sure, we'll kick that, get a counter on everybody. Oop. No, I don't want to do that. Alright, they're just going to scoop. They don't have removal for the Flyer, so they're dead. They had three mana up. They could have had removal for the Flyer. And then, like, triple block Defiler, in which case they might not die this turn. Some weird stuff like that. So I'm still going to play it out, get as much value as I can, but opponent goes for the scoop there. And we're going to be one and one heading into game number three. All right, here we are for game three. Pretty solid mana. We've got all four of our colors. Don't have the double black yet, but we did just top deck Contaminated Aquifer. Means we will have double black turn four. Now let's drop Bog first, then we've got the Natural Island for a blue source, so we can play an untapped blue source whenever we need it. Turn two, Nishoba Brawler. Couldn't be me, unfortunately. Basic, basic, basic. Three land types again. Alright. Two mana for Vine Wall. If they have a Shore up here, it's gonna be... Very bad for me. Fourth basic, fourth land type. Let us... Yeah, I think I just need them to not have a shore up here. Ideally. Alright, perfect. Kill the Brawler so I don't have to take four Trample damage next turn. Could have alternatively alternatively played the Aquifer, but then I take four and then kill the uh, Brawler, but this way I get to have the Extinguish the Light for something else later. We can play the Aquifer and Bog Badger next turn. Make the use of all, all of our mana. Another Vine Wall for our opponent. All right. That is five colors off, five basics. They did have to use vine walls to dig there, but zero non-basics is blowing my mind again. Because the vine walls can pick up non-basics. So that's generally what you expect to see. Alright, tribute to Urborg, our Knight of Dusk's Shadow. Fifth land, fifth color. That is a 5 mana 10 10, thanks to full domain. Time to extinguish the light. Can't really let them keep a 10 10 here.
Weather Seed Treaty with full domain. They're going to get a land, then a 1-1, one, one, then give something plus 5, plus 5, trample till end of turn. Grab an island for the second blue source. There's a non-basic. We found one. Haunted Mire. Send in the Bog Badger. Let's bone rattle back our little menace dork. Nayel, Abazoa, Aeronaut with full domain means dig five cards deep, put the best card into their hand. Attack with everybody here threatening a combat trick to kill Nayel. They'll probably just block this Bog Badger, but it's not going to do any blocking. Because they're going to be giving plus five, plus five trample to their sapperling anyway. And I'll still have a vine wall up if I want to make a chump block of some kind. Whoa. This has got to be a combat trick from our opponent, otherwise we're killing Nyel here, which is massive for us. To stop that amount of incredible card draw. So we got to make them have the combat trick. We have nothing else to do with our mana. We'll still have two mana up for Vinewall after this. There's no reason not to attempt to kill Nyel, even if they do have the trick. Sure. Yeah. It's rough. Here's the vine wall then. Another black source, I suppose. So now they're going to hit us for seven in the sky, draw their best card out of the top five. Uh-oh. They have hit a Tachova. They've hit all our best cards. It's a bit late. Take eight damage in the sky now. No way to stop it. Yeah, I'm dead in two turns. Can't play any more blockers. Kind of force a block here. I think they're at five. They top deck a land, we're just immediately dead. Well, we go to two. No, yeah, we go to two. It's eight damage, like I said. We're dead in two turns either way. It's like they didn't top deck a land. Maybe the plus four, plus four trample was the play there. We would force them to lose... A decent creature. If I had went for the plus four, plus four trample immediately, eight eight against zero two, three three, three three, and one one, they could have survived. Okay, and then we would die to cruelty of Gix. Although they put it at chapter one as well. Wait, they're gonna lose two life next turn? I think we've all just forgotten how the read-ahead sagas work, because we're so used to the sagas that can't read ahead right now. It's been a while since we played Dominaria. Both players could, I think, have played better just skipping over chapter one. They've got to block everything or they're dead. Means they have to lose Tachiova, which means that they don't have lethal flying damage. 
but they probably tutor for something that lethals us. Yeah, I think if I skipped ahead Weather Seed Treaty, I think we could have won this game, but I just completely forgot about Read Ahead as a mechanic, allowing that to happen. So they just search for the best card in their library, now they search for the best in their top five. Unlikely we still find the kill through this. But uh, we would have trampled over for at least two if we went for immediate trample there earlier. They probably picked up instant speed removal to make sure that we can't kill them with a flyer here. With some life gain reanimation, sure. Vortuck bone rattle. Plus four, plus four trample to somebody. What can we bone rattle? We could bone rattle. No, I can only kick her when I cast it. So whatever I bone rattle doesn't matter. Is I counter their life gain with Knight of Duck's Shadow at least. Um, I mean, Bone Rattle is legendary, so if I do this pre combat, I stop them from gaining life. I don't even know what that plays around. That plays around the white combat trick. Probably better if they survive to be able to like get a Tachiova back. No, because they'll still kill us. They'll play their own Tachiova. The forest jumps into the sky and kills us. Yeah, so we pre-combat this and sack this bone rattle. I could pick up itself. I could just play a bone rattle, sack it, put itself back to my hand for fun. Oh, okay. We find Lethal there. All right. That was a rough game. That was a loose game all around for both players, I think. Um, one of the main things, keeping in mind that we can read ahead on these sagas, probably should have just skipped to immediately getting trample damage in there. Might have even been able to kill them a turn sooner. Um... That was the main thing for sure. And then I think our opponent at well as well didn't have a high enough life total. I think they probably should have just skipped to chapter three there. Gotten something back. Yep. Gotta do gotta do some speed reading, some reading ahead in this format, so important to keep that in mind for future games. Thought for sure we were going to lose to uh, to some of those punts there in the end, but just barely make it in the end, finding lethal on that final turn. We are going to be 2-1 and one heading into game number four. Oh, well, we're on the draw again, but it is our turn to play a turn two Nishoba Brawler. But turn two Nishoba Brawler on the draw. A little more sad. Still going to be pretty cool. Turn one clockwork drawbridge from our opponent. This could be the menace of the format, the defender's deck. There's kind of like a mythic rare uncommon in this format, Wing Mantle Chaplain. It's a four mana, one three defender. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get a one one flyer for each defender you control. And whenever you play a defender, you get another one one flyer. So that's one of the things to worry about when you see a drawbridge into academy wall. They could be a Wing Mantle Chaplain deck. Could be super, super hard to beat, because the other thing about that card is that... Wow, I can't break through a 0-5 here. Um, but the other thing about that card is that there's a common colorless defender, a 4-mana 1-3, that when it enters the battlefield, searches your library for any defender and puts it into your hand. So if you have it, then you can have all of the tutors in the world to constantly have a Wing Mantle Chaplain. There's also all kinds of graveyard recursion in the format to bring the Wing Mantle back from grave, bounce spells to put it back in your hand to recast it. Tons of absurd ways to use Wing Mantle Chaplain if our opponent happens to have one here. 
And this is going to be one of those awkward moments where I have to extinguish the light of 0, 5. And I gotta be able to get in here. I gotta shore up. That'd be pretty nasty. Yep. Counter my removal spell and buff the electrostatic infantry. We are not gonna get in for a long time, which is not a good place to be. Against a potential defender's archetype. They could just be running these because they like them. They might not have the defender build arounds. But if they do have the defender build arounds, Coral Colony as well would be pretty bad for us. Every turn you can mill somebody equal to the number of defenders you control. And that's a blue card, two mana zero four. Alright, opponent plays nothing. Now we have a Terra Sunder. They have all the mana in the world up to counter it, but... Yeah, they've been playing a lot of instants and sorceries. I think I actually have to kill Electrostatic Infantry with Terra Sunder at this point over Academy Wall. It is instant speed, so I think I just pass and try to use it when they're more tapped out. Tapney Shober Brawler. Alright, they still have one blue mana up for a shore up if they have a second copy of that. They do not. We get to kill the Electrostatic Infantry. There's the Wing Mantle Chaplain. Alright. That is probably debtors. Bortok doesn't reanimate anything yet. Play a Barricade Sack itself and then Bone Rattle it next turn. But yeah, I can just can't break through the defenders. The Wing Mantle Chaplain Flyers are going to chip in at me. If they draw any more defenders, they're going to get more flyers and speed up the clock even faster. I gotta draw some massive stuff. I have to hit like Defiler Vigor or something here. Want to have any shot? Breaking through the walls. Show me the Essence Scatter. They're not gonna scatter a Vine Wall, so I don't really have an alternate line. Alright, that's basically Essence Scatter. They have like 5,000 creatures at this point, so counter unless I pay 8. That's more than the amount of lands I have. Can't really play around that. Don't have nearly enough mana to do that. Another academy wall means another flyer. We've got two vine walls to play with. Well, we got two more lands out of our deck. Terra Sunder doesn't really do anything here. Probably gets countered, and even if it doesn't, it's not like Chaplain's doing anything anymore. They already have four one Flyers to kill us in three attacks. They have too many Academy Walls to break through off a single Terra Sunder. Another Electrostatic Infantry now. So like blue-white defenders splashing a bunch of infantries, I guess. This is just going to delay the inevitable. F 
I guess I could draw into Nael or Miria's Outrider or Tetiova. We have three things that would give us flyers. So yeah, I'll I'll play it. Considering not playing it, so I don't have to sit here for three more turns, but I had to double check my deck, see if I had outs. If I do have outs, I should play it out. I do have a few. I need drawn to a flyer or a reach creature that's big enough to block the birds without dying, and I have to hit it really quickly. Then I need to tear us under the drawbridge to be able to actually block with it. But that is an out. Tear us under drawbridge into playing Miria's Outrider next turn. Could do it if our opponent doesn't have interaction. And then we just keep chipping in with the Ancient while holding up the Outrider as a blocker. Tura Kenurid. Okay, well, now significantly less likely that that works out. Yeah, because now I need to tear asunder the Tura. I guess I die in two swings either way. And if I don't kill the drawbridge, then none of my flying or reach creatures are out. I think that means I just lose no matter what. Because if I exile the drawbridge, I take... 7 and go to 1, and then if I top deck a flyer or a reach creature, I just die, because I can block 1 and then take 4 damage. If I Terrace under the Turricanurid, they hit me for 4, I go to 4. I draw into my flyer or my reach creature, and they just tap it with drawbridge. So I'm dead either way now. But I guess I just exile Turricanurid while they're tapped out. They could still have a shore up, but they couldn't have negate there. All right, finally move on to the next game. All right, here we are for game five, two and two right now. We'll be on the play with a turn two Nishoba Brawler, which could be excellent if our opponent doesn't have cheap interaction for it. Start beating in for three damage a turn with a tail swipe up as well to clear a blocker out of the way. Vine Shaper Prodigy for turn four for some card advantage. Nice card selection there. Playing against a red white. They definitely have a common that is two mana, three damage to a target. If they want to do that, or if they have it in their hand, mainly. Looks like a no. We get to get some damage in here. I'm going to hold on to the Prodigy. I'm not going to play it till I can kick it, so we're just holding up a Tail Swipe. Instant speed fight spell if something weird happens. Take two damage from the Goblin Picker. And they'll pass the turn. Keep our mana up for Tail Swipe. Play the Prodigy post-combat. All right, so they don't do anything. We will kick the Vine Shaper Prodigy. Drawn to a Bortuck Bone Rattle. Very nice end game card. They have a Resolute Reinforcements. Two one ones for two at instant speed. Okay. Got a root walla, a tail swipe. That is it here. They're stuck on two mana. They could have goblin picker's ability up. I'm gonna try a main phase tail swipe so that I can attack with both of these freely. I guess I can already attack with both. 
if they don't quadruple block one of my creatures, I can still tail swipe root wall onto one of the blockers to win combat. They're just going to take it all. Alright, fair enough. Then we just get to hold on to Tail Swipe. Pass the turn. Our opponent has found their third land. They're going to play an Argivian Phalanx for cheap, thanks to the quantity of creatures they have on board. Do I hit another black source? I do not, so I can't kill the Phalanx with Extinguish the Light. Can kill it with a buff root while a tail swipe, and the next turn bone rattle whatever dies during combat this turn. Seems fine to me. Trade Root Wall into Goblin Picker, they could double block the Prodigy and kill it, take the rest of the damage. They could double block Root Walla with two 1-1s one instead. Alright, they're going to go for that double kill there, take three. Fair enough, we get to get a nice Boar Tuck next turn now. They hit land number four. That is going to be a Hurloon Battle Hymn kicked to gain four. Geothermal Bog. I think I would rather pick up the Rootwalla over the Brawler. The Brawler is going to be a 4 3 trample, but Rootwalla can attack as a 6 6 now. And I've got the mana. I could buff Rootwalla and play Extinguish the Light in the same turn, hit them for exactly 10. If they just play one blocker, we extinguish it, buff Rootwalla, and kill them on the spot. We could not do that with Nishober Brawler. Prayer of Binding. Well, definitely cannot kill them through that. Phoenix Trick, that cannot block, so that's just going to keep poking us for one every turn. All right. We can kill them in three Bortuck Bone Rattle hits. Just saw a removal from them. All right, we got to draw another threat then. A lot of cards we could draw that are two threats in one, like Tachova and Bortuck and stuff. I should stop playing lands. I need to make sure I always have at least one left in hand because I have two Tachova in this deck. So if we hit one of those, that'll be pretty important. Well, Knight of Dusk's Shadow does hit them for potentially four damage a turn. Kills them in two swings. I have to dump all of my black man into that though, which means I can't extinguish the light anything while I'm trying to kill them in two hits. Givian Cavalier, never mind. They have a massive board of blockers for the night. That is not going to do much anymore. Take four, go down to twelve. Draw another land. Probably need to hold this up on blocks. I could extinguish and hit them for two. Or if I attack in, I theoretically hit them for four if they don't block. But then I take four, five, six, seven on the crack back. And then they can definitely have the double block on my next time I try to swing in. Yeah, I think I need to just hold on blocks and hope to draw a Tatova or a Bortuck. Got two Tatiovas, one Bortuck, one Defiler Vigor, one Moss Beard Ancient. We've got a lot of win cons we can hit. If we don't draw one naturally, there's Miria's Outrider would do it, Nael would do it. Phyrexian Espionage can help dig, help try to draw them. 
We've got gas in here, but we need to hit it quick. We've just been drawing dead a couple turns here. It's a couple too many lands compared to our opponent. Let's see what combat trick they've got. Herloon battle him, just blow it up. I'll probably go ahead and kill their librarian to buy more time. While we're doing this. Bog Badger. Well, it is not a land, so at least I get to block the Cavalier and trade into that. 14 life, take one damage in the sky every turn. Ooh, no attacks, all right. One damage in the sky it is. Vine wall, basically a land. See what we hit here. No goodies in the top six. Top six, top six. All garbage, please. No, Bone Rattle and Outrider are gonna go to the bottom here. Right, I think I will play the tap land at least. Keep these for Techovas though. And draw into another creature now. Let's see. Did you draw into another creature? Do I get to poke you for three? Well, I do get to poke you for three, and we draw into Terra Sunder. Is it another removal spell? No. All right. They're down to five now. So we take four, go down to eight. They take three, go down to two. And we're outracing them if they attack with everybody. And they are basically attacking with everybody. I'm not going to respond to that because we're out racing them on board. If they play another creature, we exile that to hit them again. Oh. Well, if they play three 1-1s, one we are far from out racing them. Seems pretty good. There's a Tachiova. Poke them for three, put them to two. Try to lethal them next turn. Found the out here. Potentially. Send in Phoenix Trick Cavalier. I'll trade into the Cavalier here. Are they going to try to play the life gain combat trick? Take up the shield? Oh, we can try to exile that. Counteract their life gain to still kill them next turn? If they have another take up the shield to use on this, it would still be exiled. But they could take up the Shield of Phoenix trick instead to gain some life, but that wouldn't be enough life to survive two forests hitting them. Okay. We exiled the Life Linker. We're down to seven, they're down to two. Play a land here for Techova. Weather Seed Treaty. Okay, I was going to say I could go for plus five, plus five Trample. But I think I'm going to go for another land to try to trigger Tachiova again there. Have three flyers coming in. But it looks like they do scoop them up, so they do not have a response to any of that. So 
We are now going to be three and two. Feels pretty good. Going to get at least a 50-50 record out of this draft. Definitely not the cleanest, not the smoothest draft. Some, some learning curves as we get back into the format. Some punts, some looser lines. So nice to be at least 50-50 here. Play as best as I can from here on out. Try to get a few more wins before we end the draft, if possible. Fingers crossed here as we head into round number six. All right, there's that turn five Defiler Vigor again. That could be super nasty. Turn two, Nishoba Brawler until then. Our opponent's on the play. We're on the draw. Okay, we've got a Bortuck Bone Rattle late game as well. Really, really good late game again. Playing against a black-white deck for now. Turn two, Salvaged Mana Worker. Mana fixes them for pretty much anything. Let's drop our turn two, Nishoba Brawler. Drawn into a Contaminated Aquifer, which is perfect, because we only have two mana cards for turn three anyway. Splatter Goblin is the play that can block and trade into the Brawler, no matter how big it is. Not a super big fan of that, but I'm still going to send it in because we can bone rattle it back later. We can't bone rattle back a defiler. We don't have any planes in the deck to get to five domain. So we would still kill the splatter goblin and trample over for a couple points of damage because we're going to have domain three for the three three trampling brawler. Okay, there's the fifth land. We know we'll hit defiler vigor on turn five. Let's play Aquifer before combat and then send in. I guess they could double blocks so that they don't actually trample over for any damage. Still just trade one for one into the Splatter Goblin. I think I'm still okay with that. We're going to have to get that thing out of the way at some point. Could go full greed on Defiler of Vigor and just hope to make the Brawler bigger later by playing more green spells. But I want something engraved when I Bone Rattle. Also. So there's, there's like two alternate greed lines. There's the greed of sitting here doing nothing trying to get counters on the board. Or I can greedily be like, well, I want to reanimate something with Bone Rattle. Geothermal Bog for Domain 4. Just play it and pass. Just bounce off here. I'm not going to try to attack into the Mana Worker. Another Splatter Goblin. All right, we've got some very good removal in this hand now. Extinguish and tear us under. Play our Defiler Vigor, then we play Bortuck. Putting a counter on our board. The Clockwork Drawbridge. That can tap things down. It's going to be a Bone Splinters here to kill the Defiler. Sure is. Sack a creature, destroy one of our creatures. Send in with the Mana Worker for one damage. Another Bortuck. <laughs> Alright. I should have attacked with Root Walla there, that was loose. I guess I could just put the Defiler back into my hand instead of on board. That's probably better than putting a uh, Nishoba Brawler on the board. Totally forgot. I can just always put them back to hand anyway. So I can always Defiler Vigor with my Bortuck Bone Rattles. Braids' Frightful Return. See what they want to do with their Sacrifice deck over here. Sack a creature, make us discard a card, or return a creature from their grave to hand, or make us lose two life and they draw a card. And they could do all three of those if they start on Chapter 1. I assume they're probably starting on Chapter 2. 
Just get the draw two out of it. Return a creature to hand and then make us lose two life and then draw a card. Okay, they're going to go for the force to discard here. Before five, if I top deck a forest, I could tear asunder the mana worker. So I think I'll keep that. So I could go Defiler and Tear Asunder. Ooh, Miria's Outrider. It is very nice. I think Defiler Vigor a little stronger. All right, I'm not gonna dump a bunch of mana into killing the mana worker. I'll just play the Defiler of Vigor. Well, all right, nice. Making this attack because it threatens to buff the Rootwalla, so they know that if they block, I could just kill the mana worker, but I have much better things to do with my mana. So we just get an extra two damage in there. Extinguish the light on the Defiler of Vigor. Poke in for one. Can't quite kill them, but get really close with Miria's Outrider. Deals just as much damage as buffing the Root Walla would have. And it puts another 4-4 four four on the board to attack them with later. Sengir Connoisseur. One more blocker. They're already dead on board. That should be game. Don't remember any zero mana cards in this set. Any Convoke style nonsense. Just be able to send in with the squad. All right. Four and two it is. We're now headed into the positive win rates. Pretty happy with that. Going to get an average run or better here now. Yeah, see if we can keep it going. We are now into the diamond tier. Here we are for game seven on the play. We have a turn two Knight of Dusk's Shadow. We're really hoping to draw one land so that we can weather seed treaty into the fourth mana and go from there. Land War Stalker will start things off for our opponents. A little 1-1 one, one that gets plus 1 plus 0 when they play a creature. So it can beat down pretty hard if they curve out. Constantly playing creatures. The Knowledge Sleeper is the next play. 2 mana 3-1 there. We did miss that land drop here. Can definitely take over the long game here. I'd rather trade a root walla off aggressively than a brawler. So I'm just gonna hold these on blocks. Make sure I can survive longer. Yep, they're playing a bunch of two toughness creatures to trade off into. So we'll trade into the sleeper and then we'll trade into the tortoise. Alright, Flurfus Vine Wall can find me that uh that third land, get a contaminated aquifer here. Now we block the 3 2 ward creature with a 2 2. Remember, creature control dies, put a fiercest counter on it. And scry one. If it gets, if four or more of their creatures die, they're gonna have a 5 5. Alright. Well, this is the first creature that dies. Or not. All right, no counters on the weather light then. How much ward does this have? It has ward two. Kind of have to just play brawler to have a blocker for that. 
need a three tough a three power creature now. Brawler is my only option. Yeah. Just going for blocks if possible. Argivian Phalanx, 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Send in the Tortoise, trade our 3-3 into that. Excellent. The Weatherlight is at 1 out of 4 counters. Okay, let's Weather Seed Treaty for the red source and play a contaminated aquifer and we can play a boar tuck next turn. Probably boar tuck back a brawler or a root walla for a 4-3 blocker or a potential 6-6 six, six if I dump extra mana into it. Probably just take the 4-3. Leaf Crowned Visionary. Well, that explains the Land War Stalker. They're going for elves. Take 7 here, go to 9. That's going to be painful. But I like being able to chomp and sack with Barricade later, potentially. Go to 9. Tear Asunder. Now we have a way to exile Weatherlight completed if it ever activates for only 2 mana. So let's Bone Rattle. I think I need cards that can immediately trade off, so we'll take the Nishoba Brawler. Griffin Protector is the play. Hate to see that. We'll probably have to tail swipe that. Not in a great position to deal with flyers right now. Moss Beard Ancient. Do have to hit another green sword for that. Plus four, plus four trample to somebody. I think I just get the free uh, sapling swing in here for damage. We do what? We play Barricade Tail Swipe. I guess I should have Tail Swiped pre-combat for one more damage, but this seems fine too. Yeah, we could have hit them down to 19. Missed one point of damage there. Land for turn. A Johnny Sleeper Agent puts three plus and plus one counters on their board, gives them all vigilance, where it sits there attempting to draw creatures off the top. Both of those are pretty great. Yeah, they're going to buff the board. We draw into a Techiova, but I don't have the second green somehow. Well, I could exile a Johnny, but then I can't exile the Weatherlight completed later. I don't have a way to hit a Johnny for one. Kind of feel like I have to kill a Johnny with Terra Sunder. Then chill till I hit another green source and win the game from there. out of four on this now. There's the green source, though. 
think I play Mossbeard Agent first. Um, because Techova, I can just play the turn. I'm going to actually play a land and use Techova's ability. This doesn't have Vigilance, right? No, it's just a 5 5 flyer. I attack with Bone Rattle, they trump with one, then they have a 5 5 flyer. I think I'd rather just force them to attack into this board state to trigger the Weatherlight completed, because then we can kill like both their creatures. Well, Prayer Binding is a very good draw. Probably scryed into it with Weatherlight completed. Floriferous Vine Wall, so much for playing Tachiova this turn. I'd have to Vine Wall into a land, hold it in hand, then next turn play Tachiova plus land. Alright, Forest it is. Better to play Tachiova this turn or keep this land to play with Tachiova next turn. Probably keep this. I can barricade it away a Vine Wall or a 1 1 here to draw a card, gain a life. Weather Seed Treaty. They're going to get the Sapperling and then get the plus two, plus two. Okay. More than happy to block and sacrifice here if they want to attack with the four, three. Cool. We will block, sacrifice the defender, I think. Miria's Outrider is the draw, so we've got a Chump Blocker for a Flyer, which is great. Time to go to Tachiova Town. I could tap this land to play Outrider this turn. I'm not going to be attacking with a 4-4 four four though, because I don't want to kill any of these without killing all of them. So I'll just hit for 3. Hold up the Barricade Man again for a Block Sack. Oh, I'm going to get trampled here, aren't I? I guess just plus two, plus two trample, because there are two color decks. That's not bad. All right, cool. Let's get trampled. Block sack doesn't do anything against trample, because they just trample all four damage over. But I can still sack the end step here. For value. Got a vine shaper prodigy. All right, here's a land. Beat in with one of these swamps, I think. And the Tachiova win con is going for it. Shoot for four more. They're down to nine, which means next turn they just die in the sky. Attack for nine flying power. Well, not if they top deck a gain five, then they are still in it for one more turn after this. Especially if I let them activate the Weatherlight completed. So I would like to block in a way that doesn't kill their creatures. Probably just 1-1 one, one on the 4-3, take 2 damage for now. Phyrexian Espionage. Well, they have no cards in hand, so I'm not that excited about that. Vine Shaper Prodigy here. Let's Prodigy and Dig, see if that changes anything. Another Tachiova or a Tribute to Urborg. Take a Tribute to Urborg. All right, they are dead next turn, even if Weatherlight completed flips. So send in the squad it is. So let's actually make good blocks this time. Do something like that and then kill them on the crackback. Holding up a tribute to Urborg here, but it probably would have been better to uh, sack a trump blocker there if we had a trump block going on. I guess our only trump block was against the trampler where the sack wouldn't have helped. Alright, land for turn. They're very dead. Cool. Uh, might as well try to hit another land. Cool. 
Activate that. Uh, attack with everybody. If I animated the right land there, I could have uh, Terra Sundered the Weather Light for a green and one and still attacked with everybody. But we were still very far in the lead there, so it looks like it did not matter. We are now 5 and 2, turning this into a very nice, very high win rate run. Very much where I like to be. We are one win away, though, from being in the money out of this quick draft. So see if we can't get another win here. And if we get two more, that's a full 7 win trophy run. So great turnaround after kind of a rocky start. Definitely was uh, pretty... Um, Pretty rusty on the format, so we started off pretty loose here. And I think we probably could have drafted a bit better for sure as well. Probably taking these uh, duels a little more highly, taking the off-color duels more highly. Uh, I was drafting in a way where I just really wanted to have good mana fixing in my primary colors, but it's been a long time since I played this format, so I kind of forgot. You do really want your off-colors too quite a bit, so taking one of those like red-white deal duels or something pretty highly could have been quite helpful as well to get us to a position where we could actually have Domain 5 without having to run a basic planes in this deck. So again, there's definitely been some sloppy gameplay, some sloppy drafting. Could have drafted a bit better, could have played a bit better, but really happy to be five wins in. Um, kind of rusty on the format here, because I'm already noticing a lot of things that, uh, that I could definitely do better. So five win run on a pretty loose draft. It's looking great so far. Got another turn two Nishobo Brawler, which is always disgusting. But here we have Domain 4 for it even, to hit for 4 damage this turn. Should probably... No, I'm going to hold up Tribute to Urborg during combat, in case some really weird nonsense happens. There's some Flash creature I don't remember. Okay, there's not. We'll just Vine Wall post-combat then. Resolute Reinforcements. There is a Flash creature. Not big enough to kill the Brawler, though. Um, do I have the second black? Yeah, I've got two black sources. I have two green sources. And we got cards like Tetsiova all over the place. Let's grab a third green, I guess. It'd be a very long time until I try to extinguish light and tribute to Urborg in the same turn. Uh, Braids is quite good. We'll probably extinguish the light Braids. Well, if Nshoba Brawler trades into Braids, isn't that just fine? It's actually just fine. Because otherwise they can keep sacking 1-1s one to make me lose to life and have them draw a card. Or make me sacrifice a creature. So I'm pretty fine with this trade. And I could even tribute to Urborg to really ruin their day. I feel like that's probably better than playing Vine Shaper here. Although, tribute to Urborg, after I extinguish the light, minus 3, minus 3 is enough to kill something. So I am like trading a legitimate card into Braids here. Brawler is like my one way to get damage in right now, though, and if they want to trade Braids in, too, that probably means they don't have good removal for Brawler in their hand right now. Yeah, I guess it's kind of weird, but I guess I'll combat trick Braids. Because, like, yeah, theoretically, Brawler into Braids is a fine, favorable trade for us. So I don't even think they would want to make that trade. So the thing that made me want to actually not take the trade is the fact that they did want to take the trade. So I'm like, hold up a second. So they have no way to deal with Brawler, I guess. And that looks like the case right now. They're going to try to double block it with Apparition 1-1. One -one. That'd be fine. Go Espionage for value. We draw two, they discard one. Yeah, let's just come pretty far ahead in card advantage and go for this. Oh, I have a Defiler of Vigor coming up now. Alright, I will happily trade Brawler into Apparition in 1-1 then. Now I have other win conditions.
Danitha Benalia's Hope. Well, there's their win condition, but we've got that extinguished still. Which I think I just want to do immediately before that gains them any life. I guess if I play a 6-6, if they don't have removal, they're not going to gain any life. But if they do have removal and, if I, and I play Defiler, they kill it, attack in, that's going to be pretty bad. Or if they have a combat trick, that's horrible. Yeah, let's just ex extinguish Danitha here immediately. Keep them at 12. Writhing Necromass, Death Toucher. Ooh, Bortuck Bone Rattle. You're spicy. Pick up a Brawler. I feel like I gotta play Defiler of Vigor first, though. Sure, whatever. I'll give up on the kicker value. Because I get to play a 1-mana 2-2 two, two, and put a counter on Defiler of Vigor if I play it right now. I was holding on to that Prodigy so long for value. Oh my god, Weather Seed Treaty? I'm going to do maximum cost bog. I think I killed him here. Because I can do just full cost bog badger than two mana weather seed treaty. And that's just lethal. Even if I don't go for the trample ability. So I think I'm going to go for full value and not even go for the trample. Because they're already dead to menace. Grab another island. I don't know. Actually, probably should have grabbed another swamp, but not going to matter because they don't have interaction in hand. So we did have the good read there that did explain why they wanted to just trade Brawler off into the braids. They just didn't have any pieces of interaction in their hand, no removal or anything to get them to want to trade such a valuable card into our new Shober Brawler rather than trying to uh, hit the removal spell. Didn't have a removal spell, so... Let's just close things out real quick with Defiler of Vigor, and we're now 6-2. and two. We're in contention for the trophy here. We're heading into the final boss, win or lose. Again, definitely some things I could have done better in the draft, so I'm really happy to have at least made it this far, but see if we can make it all the way as we head into the final boss. All right, here we are for the final game of Magic, win or lose. Our opponent is going to be on the play. We've got a turn two vine wall guaranteed that we can use to try to hit our next mana. We make it to high mana cost, we can do some great things, and we're on the draw. I'm going to keep it. It's basically a three lander on the draw with some high mana value stuff we're trying to get to, so there's some risk for sure. But being on the draw plus having a vine wall makes the hand perfectly keepable to me. Hoping to find a blue source now for this vine shaper prodigy. And there is a blue source, so I'll scoop that up. Send in for two. Our opponent's on white, green, and black. Another Juniper Order Root Weaver. That is really suspicious. I don't know what they have for one mana they want to do here. Nothing. Okay. Really weird. Maybe they just missed that they could kick it and get a plus one, plus one counter there. We're down to 14. We might just die to our opponent playing two 2 mana 2 We'll definitely die to them playing King Darien. This card is absurd. The whole board gets plus 1, plus 1, and for 5 mana they can put a counter on Darien and a 1-1 one, one on the board. Um, so I have to skip out on playing Vine Shaper Prodigy this turn because I need to tail swipe King Darien immediately. To get that off the board. All right, cool. If they don't have removal for this brawler, I now have a three toughness creature on board to block their two twos as well. There's a brawler of their own. And no removal for our brawler. So now we get to play the aquifer tapped, so we know we can Bortuck Bone Rattle next turn, trade our brawler into theirs, then Bone Rattle it back. Maybe play Niel to set up draws and have a two four blocker rather than Vine Shaper Prodigy, because I already know what I'm doing turn six, turn seven. So I don't need to set up another draw. Yeah, seems good. Go for Niel here. I guess both of these set up a draw. This one sets up several in a row. This one sets up one immediately. So just play the Niel for the higher toughness, the bigger body to play around with. Destroy evil. Well, looks like I should not have played the higher toughness card because that's the only one that could have died. 
to that. Is this fine though? We're in a great position to recover with Bortuck Bone Rattle. It's a writhing necromass from our opponent. That's not the greatest for us because of its five toughness. We're certainly on Bone Rattle this turn. Double block Necromass to kill it. Just pick up Niel again. Blocks these two twos all day long. I think I have to just take five for a turn. Wow, uh, Broken Wings to kill Niel. Main deck Broken Wings coming in hot. Doing its thing. Go to nine. I'll trump it next turn. All right, there we go. Sunbathing Root Wall is a beautiful draw. That's a six six. That can block and trade with the Necromass if I hold four mana up. A lot of mana to hold up, though. Maybe I hold off for a turn and crack Vine Wall. You know what? Yeah. Trump with the Vine Wall or the Prodigy this turn. Get a Mirrors Outrider coming up. You know what? My hand's good enough to recover here. I'm gonna two for one myself. And just deal with that immediately so I don't have to hold four mana up every turn and tax myself four mana, because four mana is a lot. Uh, so Tachiova, once we draw another land, Tachiova is certainly the play. For now, we Espionage. I guess I don't have good blocks if I Espionage, so I gotta Outrider first. Make sure I can keep blocking the two twos. Oh, they're over it. They're just scooping them up. I will take it. That'll be our seventh victory. I guess they were just on a more standard curve out kind of deck and they saw the domain deck stabilizing and playing big spells and they're like, nope, don't have any big spells of my own for later. That would be the only thing gameplay wise that make, might make sense. Maybe they're like stuck off a double black card or a double white card and just frustrated, or they had something come up IRL they had to deal with that does definitely happen. Who knows? Who knows there? But I think that was going to be a winning game for us, even if it took a while there. Uh, if we don't hit a land next turn, then we get to espionage, draw two, make them discard one uh, to dig for the land, and then the turn after that. If they haven't put any more pressure on us, we get to Tachiova and start chipping away with, at them with Flying Lands. If they have put more pressure on us, we get to gain 5 and have a 7-7 seven, seven blocker. A lot of great options for late game, all three of these cards being really good at this point in the game. So I think we were in a solid position, even if they didn't scoop. So we do make it. We make it all the way to a 7-win run, a trophy run for the return to Dominar United Quick Drafts. Very sweet stuff. Really nice to be able to trophy with this domain deck. Again, I don't think I drafted or played perfectly, definitely early on, like during drafting the deck, and then during the first few rounds of gameplay, I think I made a few a few mistakes that uh, that in the future I would do differently. For the most part, when it comes to over and under performers for this style of deck, I highly recommend all of the cards that were the best in this deck that we drafted really highly. The Tachiovas, as we saw, were incredible win conditions for the archetype. Bone Rattles were great ways to stabilize as well as turn things around. And the Defiler of Vigor is very self-explanatory, was just a massive bomb rare. These, I'm very happy with just drafting them as aggressively as I did just as soon as I saw them just scoop and get in the deck. Um, that for sure. Mossbeard Ancient again, that was a good card for stabilizing. Outrider was quite solid, that big damage fling when it hits the board. Fine Walls were the good mana setup. Most of everything that I said was was pretty good, was pretty good. Like the Badger, the Barricade, the Knight. These were all kind of filler and whatever, but everything else was pretty great. Niel ended up being more uh, filler because we didn't get a white source. So that was the main thing that I was going to say that I think was a flaw during the drafting. I think I should have realized earlier that I was headed in kind of the Sultai late game explosive direction of domain strategies. There is kind of a um Sultai's green, blue, black, for those who don't know. There's kind of a gruel or a red green focused aggressive version of this domain deck that tries to get many Myria's Outriders alongside 
a lot of like good aggressive two drop creatures and i think that's where gaia's might really pops off because you can end a game out of nowhere so quickly but with this kind of deck with the way that our games played out um and the way that we ended up building our deck i don't think gaia's might I was going to end up being super exciting because it basically just works as a removal spell that we have to get into combat to use in this sort of strategy because we're winning a lot of these games by having an overwhelming board advantage with something like Tachiova or Bortuk or Moss Beard or Defiler Vigor. Not really winning these games by getting a surprise extra amount of damage like we would with a more aggressive green red version of a domain deck. So I think that's the biggest thing. I took these relatively highly. These are the biggest things that we could have not taken to take other cards, specifically the cards I think I didn't take highly enough were off-color dual lands. I think just one white source in this deck could have helped a lot. Sure, Niel is the card that would really have been helped by being able to get to 5 domain, but even the double Bortuk being able to actually reanimate a Defiler Vigor or Mirrors Outrider instead of just put it into our hand would be quite powerful as well. And Weather Seed Treaty going up to plus five, plus five instead of plus four, plus four. So I think, um, I again don't think maybe it was worth putting one planes in this deck, but the mana base was already kind of difficult, stretched kind of thin between the four colors. Um, Maybe we could have put one basic planes here, but the thing that could have went a lot better for the deck was having some kind of non-basic plane in here. If we took, we saw some Sacred Peaks, the red-white mountain and plains common. We saw some like the white-black non-basic land common. If we had just one or two of those, I think this would have been a lot better. Being able to hit the full five domain um, would have been pretty valuable. And I don't think that I kept my eye on completely off-color dual lands um, as much as I, I should have. I was really just on like the half on colors and really on the uh, the on color ones here. So I think getting some more off color duels over the stuff like Gaia's Might that we ended up just cutting anyway or the filler two drop splatter goblin we ended up cutting anyway would have been pretty nice. I think most of the duels that we passed up were over these premium cards, but I know at least one dual land. I think I passed a dual land for a Gaia's Might and I think that was just wrong for this form of domain deck. So definitely could have drafted better there. And then in the gameplay, the really big punt, I'm sure there were more, but the really big memorable punt was just kind of forgetting about read ahead as mechanic, just playing my saga and being like, all right, then I'm going to grab my land and then my thapperling, and then I will give to plus ones. When, if I just immediately went for the big plus four, plus four trample, we would have put in a massive amount of um, damage into our opponent's face and potentially just killed them on the spot. So I needed to keep that uh, that read ahead in mind and completely forgot about the mechanic in general so uh, yeah again i'm sure there were other things gameplay wise but that was a big one the sagas in this format work differently than the sagas in every other format in a cool way that makes them more flexible and more powerful if you keep them in mind and you do got to keep them in mind though to get that value so that's everything about the gameplay the deck the overperformers the underperformers the punts the things i would do differently in the future but I'm pretty happy to be where we're at now, 7 and 2, grabbing the maximum prizes out of this quick draft. But that's going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons very much for supporting this channel, and thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.